Hi Philip, welcome to the Future Proof Operations Podcast. Hi Benjamin, thank you for the invitation. Philip, great to have you on the show. Could you give us a short introduction of who you are and what you are doing? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Philip Menz. Um, I am 35 years old. Um, at the moment, I'm a plant manager in uh, a Sinter plant in Thale, which um, belongs to the Schunk Group, um, which is a technology company um, which makes different um, technological um, topics. Um, before that, I um, were a head of quality management in our plant in, in Heuchelheim. And um, yeah, in my free time, I'm with my family, do a lot of sports and uh, motorcycle and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Help us to understand a little bit better what you are actually producing and how your factory is looking like. Um, let's imagine I'm a guest and I'm visiting you at your factory and you take me on a walk through your factory. How is it looking like there? So what are you producing? How is your automation level? Do I see a lot of workers there? How is it looking like? Yeah. So um, mainly we, we are producing sinter parts and um, metal injection molding parts. Um, it is a plant which uh, has around um, yeah, 25,000 square meters of um, production area. And um, we are 430 um, employees at the plant. Um, yeah, what, what it is look like, um, <laughs> you come into the plant, um, you uh, have um, the, the metal injection molding area where we produce uh, mainly for automotive industry and aerospace uh, industry. Um, metal injection molding is like plastic injection molding, you, but, but you do it with metal. Um, the main difference is that you um, have uh, uh, a metal powder, which afterwards is getting debinded and sintered, which you do not need at mm -hmm. uh, plastic injection molding. Um, there we have um, a, a big area of uh, injection molding machines, um, I think 90, 90, 90 machines at the moment. Um, we have uh, a lot of four belt furnaces and we have one batch furnace. Um, so it's three different areas. And um, then we have a mixing area where we mix our powder by ourselves. Um, that's, that's the metal injection molding area. And another mm -hmm. area that we... Um, where we produce parts is the sinter metals um, area. There we are compacting powder, metal powder, by mainly hydraulic presses uh, in between 200 and 800 tons of uh, pressing force. Afterwards, the parts are getting sintered in uh, belt furnaces around 100, uh, 1,120 degrees, something like that. Um, and afterwards, they are uh, getting calibrated because when you go through the furnace, you have um, yeah, deviations by the heating of the part. And um, then you calibrate it also by presses. And then um, we also yeah. have a big area of machining where we do turning, milling, uh, uh, grinding and so on. Okay, so I understood already a lot about the process itself. Yeah. So I'm a little bit of process pro now. Yeah. Today, we want to talk about leadership and leadership styles and how they have been changing in the past probably if they still need to change yeah when you take that into the perspective of your factory how many people do work within your factory i understood already that there are a lot of machines which are conducting some processes how many teams how many people do we have in your factory we are 430 employees so so there is a lot of room for talking about leadership yeah yeah there there is a, <laughs> is a lot of room for that for sure okay okay great so let's let's start with it let's dive into it when we talk about leadership why do you think it's important to to talk about it what are the challenges in leadership explicitly in the manufacturing space from your perspective i think there are a, a lot of a lot of challenges uh, in general um, one of the, the main challenges is that um, people today um, do want to have uh, other surroundings, other preferences uh, in, in their work, in their daily work. So um, 
Um, everybody talks about uh, Generation Y, Generation Z, and baby boomers and all those uh, things. Uh, and yeah, you 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 also recognize that when you when you work together with the people uh, at the shop floor or um, also in in our uh, white color area. Um, you you need to build up strong team in my point of view, um, and you need to build up a strong bonding to the company to hold the people and to bring them to. Yeah, their, their maximum output, I would say, um, because today it's not enough to go on the shop floor, uh, bug around, and then go go back into the office. <laughs> uh, you you need to you need to build up a strong connection to the company, especially in Germany. We have this um, yeah um, big uh, yeah loss of professionals. I would say we need more professionals in Germany, and if they want to change, they can change at the moment. So we are we need to be able to 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 build up a strong connection to the company. Mm -hmm. If we still stay on the the high level or on the meta level, when it comes to talking about leadership challenges, would you agree that we are lagging behind on the factory level or, or within manufacturing companies when we compare that to business life? When I take a look into the business life, I see that for the last 10 years, there have been a lot of books about leadership style. There was Simon Sinek with starting with the why and a lot of TED talks about how the leadership style should change. But I didn't see that in a connection to how the leadership style should change, for example, for teams within a factory in a manufacturing company. Are we 10 years too late in manufacturing? I think we are a, a little bit too late. Yes, for sure. Um, but in general, I think it depends. It depends a little bit on, on the people which lead. Uh, so often you have people which are which are led um, a little more, a little bit more hierarchically, and um, today mm -hmm. you need it a bit more cooperative. And um, I, I do not, I do not see this when I visit other productions or other factories, and also, um, yeah, when I when I started in, in our factory, that um, the 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 leaders on the shop floor are, are living this this example or living living this this leadership style um, and mainly in my point of view because they are not informed about all those topics mm -hmm. so is it a coaching topic do we have to start by um, leading by role models so we actually need to train or coach the the current leaders better yeah in my point of view we, we should do that so we started few months ago, we um, took all our leaders in production and also for the teams in the, in the white color area and brought them together with a trainer, with a coach. And um, yeah, we, we discussed about the, the fundamental principles um, which uh, in, in leadership, which people want to or, or need to, to have today to, to bring the best um, yeah, output uh, in, in the factory. And um, the funny thing about that was that there were some fundamental things which everybody of us in my generation uh, is aware of, but um, our, our um, employees, our leaders, um, were not um, aware of uh, some topics where we say, okay, it, it's, it's normal to, to, to lead like that. And um, this was really interesting to see. So um, in my point of view, yes, we need more coaching uh, in this uh, area. Mm -hmm. Before we dive deeper into how to coach the leaders and understanding better why we actually need to do that, so probably it's it's connected to the generation as well, I would like to understand better what is missing currently. So if you take a look into a factory and you talk about leadership and you talk about the teams that are being led by that leadership, what is missing from your perspective? So I can only dis, uh, um, answer this question uh, in, in my point of view at uh, the, the mm -hmm. factory at, at the moment. And um, what I see is that we are a really traditional company, a really uh, a company where the people 
nearly work 40 years, 45 years. I have a lot of people in the last year uh, which go went to to retirement and I and then and they 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 worked the whole life in one company. And um, I think a lot of those people leading normally small teams in the shop floor because they are long there. They're, they have a long time mm -hmm. with the company. So um, I, I think it should be understood that the people today do not work their whole life in one company. They are... Mm -hmm. They, they do not have a problem with changing or with moving to another company which is in the neighborhood or something like that. They also drive uh, more kilometers because the distances are not a, not an, not an issue when the when the work is makes sense for them or or is is good for them. And um, I think in, in in my point of view, uh, this is this is the main point which is which should be understood by managers in production. So you argue that it would be some kind of clash of generations, that we have some kind of old leadership style, which probably worked the last decades, but now we have a new generation coming into the factory and they expect different kind of leadership. Is that right? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, in my point of view also, the, 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 the old leadership style worked um, or worked has also their it's it's okay to to also have a part of this old leadership style sometimes and i think you have to um take a look at your employee and take a look at the employee's needs because you also have some people which want to be led by um this this i would say uh, former leadership style not old because some some people today also want to have this leadership style um and you have to take care which generation sits in front of me and how should I, should I lead this generation in, in the specific case? And uh, yeah, that's a big challenge for every manager at the moment, I think, because it's totally different. In our preparation call, you mentioned some symptoms of probably bad leadership or something which is not working as expected. And you talked about the level of sickness within a factory. So could you elaborate here a little bit more of why was it important for you to monitor that level of sickness and do you foresee other other symptoms of bad leadership? Yeah, so the, the sickness rate itself, in my point of view, is not only because of bad leadership. In my point of view, we have a, a bunch of topics which lead to higher sickness rates in industry in general. Everybody who I talk with is telling me that the, that the sickness rates are, are increased, for example, since mm -hmm. Corona. And um, there are a lot of topics in my point of view. Um, but I think one, one aspect is that um, the strong connection I, mean, I mentioned before, which the, the people need to have in their, in, to their company. And the more people you get from the new generation, from the generation Z and Y in, into your plant, and the less people you have from, for example, from the baby boomer generation, um, the more it is important to have this strong bonding. And if mm -hmm. you do not have it, in my point of view, it's, it's, yeah, it's totally clear that, that sickness rates will increase. Yeah. Okay. So let's assume we have more and more um, general, uh, generation Z or generation Y within a factory and you talk about uh, bonding them to the company. Which kind of strategies or measures do you foresee that could solve their challenges which we discussed in the past yeah. minutes? Yeah. So in, in, my, in my point of view, um, a really important thing is that the people searching for sense in their work Mm -hmm. And they searching for kind of, I don't know, I, I don't want to use the word family, but uh, sometimes you use it in this <laughs> uh, case. <laughs> so um, w the, the, the main point is that they want to discuss about topics and not be um, the, 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 the one who gets uh, an order and uh, yeah, fulfill the order and then uh, without thinking about why I should, why, why I should do that. So um 
yeah, for me, it's all about bringing people together to discuss about um, the topics to in, in, the, in a working manner. For example, when you have workshops, we do a lot of Kaizen events at our shop floor. We have uh, last year, we had 20, 20 Kaizen workshops together with our employees at the shop floor. And I also um, work in blue color in this moment. And I, when you when you when you go on the on the shop floor and you clean up the shop floor together uh, side by side on your knees then then you have other discussions you have a stronger bonding the 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 people recognize okay hey he's 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 the manager of the plant but hey he's cleaning up the shop floor together with me so i can <laughs> i can discuss on another way with him and i can maybe i can trust him a little bit more uh, this is yeah. the one side the, the the side of the of the working um yeah manner to 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 have more interaction we also do a lot of okr workshops um workshops to to discuss about plant structures and so on and then we have the other on the other hand um kind of an event calendar for our plant where we do a lot of employee events to build up this connection in between also the departments so we um, offer motorcycle tours together in our plant. We offer running events. We offer uh, cycling tours with three different uh, types of cycles. Uh, we do a family party this year. And, and all those things um, should help to build up a strong connection also in between the departments. Because in the past, um, the departments work not, not really together. Especially at the shop floor, the the, the guy who is uh, measuring the parts is going into the measuring department, and the guy who is uh, mm -hmm. pressing the parts is going to the press, and then they do their job the whole day, and then they go home. And um, yeah, with with our team events um, in the free time, we 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 show them, hey, you maybe you have some some points which brings you together, common interests, or, or, and things like that. And then they also discuss at, at work in, in, a, in a different way and they act more like a team than, than before. And this is one big point of our, of our initiative, I would say. Is everybody at your company supporting that or do you see people who are blocking it? Because I could imagine there might be some people who say, hey, this is, isn't that fun stuff here and we are not here to make fun. Uh, you say you are doing bike tours and you are planting trees you said that yeah we plant in our two, preparation two and a half thousand trees. hey why do you do that uh, please go to your factory and build build products so is everybody aligned yes uh, to today yes but at the start not so when you start with such uh, activities there are some people for example the motorcyclist CA hey, why 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 do they why why are they uh, bicycling or running why why are do they these crazy people why do they, uh, do they do that and um, then you offer a motorcycle tour and they, then they say, hey, maybe it's, maybe it's cool. And then they recognize, okay, it's, it's a cool event. And um, for us, a big, big success was to plant the trees because we are in a region in, in Germany called Harz. Um, it's in Saxonia-Anhalt and mm -hmm. we have a big problem with um, dying trees. So we mobilized the whole plant. Um, and we we bought two and a half. Oh, we bought, we bought five thousand, but we we managed only to plant two and a half thousand trees in one day together as as a team. And everybody recognized, okay, the people around me are pretty cool. We have common interests, and now we can move on. So at the moment, I I do not see big, um, yeah, um, voices against those events. There are some people do you sometimes, measure... but in general, not. Okay. How do you measure the impact of that initiatives in the end? I assume there should be some kind of return on invest for, for you and for the company. What is your success metric? Okay. In general, you, you cannot bring it into numbers directly. It's in, in, in my point of view, it's indirect effects. One point is that we increased partly the productivity which we see and we do not have additional measures besides those topics um, we communicating our vision our strategy uh, and also our core topics in the plant during that events because it, it every time it comes to work that's totally normal also if you do a private event you you talk about work so um, everybody knows for us it is really important to increase safety 
for us it's really a, a big thing to with that we that we need to increase uh, or to improve our sickness rate and all those things and what we see is that we have less um accidents at work and also our sickness rate is improving slowly but it is improving i think that's a topic you need really long for uh because yeah it's it's not 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 solved in i don't know two events and then you have uh, the best sickness rate sickness rate uh, you ever had so it, it it's improving it's it's a long term process and um yeah sometimes you have to be, believe on those things and um i think that's mm -hmm. that's the point if you take a look into the experience you gained in the last years you as a young plant manager you conducted already some projects you tried to change the the leadership style for example uh, within your plant would you have uh, a very hands-on example where you say okay here i i had that kind of project i had a transformation that i was pushing and this is my lessons learned probably some some positive things which you would recommend and some negative where you say don't do that i would not do that again <laughs> hard question <laughs> of course <laughs> To bring it to those initiatives in, in, in general, one main topic is or one important point for us is to connect the plants between um, Gießen and Thale, which are our two German plants for Sinter. Mm -hmm. And um, to, the, the, the main, main focus is here to increase the synergies in between those plants. Uh, and what, what was funny was that when we announced the first motorcycle tour, we I, had, uh, the, the, I, I got an email from Gies, colleagues, colleagues from Gießen who asked me, uh, hey, Philip, where can I uh, have a hotel in Thala? I want to join a motorcycle tour. I said, hey, <laughs> you have to drive 300 kilometers to Thale. You uh, have to book a hotel. And um, yeah, cool. <laughs> and then they joined the <laughs> motorcycle tour. So mm -hmm. we drove around, had good discussions, um, really cool day. And then we go to dinner and so on. So then the colleagues from Thale asked me the next day, hey, uh, Philip, when do we do the motorcycle tour in Gießen? And I asked them, uh, <laughs> we do not plan a motorcycle tour in Gießen. And so um, we, we have done this uh, on, on the, at the beginning on the month, uh, of the month. And then we drove mm -hmm. together with five people from Thale to Gießen and also have done the same thing there. So um, what I learned is that um, you have to bring the people together outside of their normal work environment and then you will have mm -hmm. synergies out of those topics because we have also planned tours in uh, those uh, at those events for the Gießen colleagues and for the, for the colleagues in Thale, they, they moved to the plant in Gießen and they never have been there before because it's factory workers, they never had the chance before to join the factory in Gießen so this was the first time and um, then we had uh, also some ideas for our plant in Thale and for our plant in Gießen out of those visits so mm -hmm. um, sometimes you recognize that you that you have ideas synergies positive effects uh, when you do not uh, expect it yeah yeah this is a great learning yeah and, and you say you you need to pull your team out of the box take them out of their factory and really physically try them to to connect them to some other to some other teams even if you have to go by car and not not staying in the teams meeting to empower them for that because normally they are a bit shy at the beginning and when they when they recognize okay you want to do that and you want to have that then they will do it yeah okay got it philip we are already coming to an end of this episode and i I get really inspired by you because you, you take your energy and you say, okay, I, I want to change something within my factory and I do not take everything for granted, which is already there, but I, I motivate it to change things. And I assume we will continue to change things within your factory. If you take a look into the next 10 years and you take a look into your factory, you see your team and you will continue to empower it. Which kind of plans or which strategy will you will you go and how will your factory look like 10 years from now and how will your workers be empowered 10 years from now 
Okay, the the empowerment of the workers, I think we pr improved that a lot, and I, I I hope that it that it's even more in ten years. That's the main main point for me in in this case. Um, mm -hmm. All those events which I mentioned before are only a fundament for me to yeah. Im to improve the work surroundings, to improve the the factory itself, and um, yeah, the next step should be to Im Im improve the idea management, for example. Because when the, when the people are empowered, when the people want to improve, when the people uh, trust you, then they also want uh, they, they also you will also have a good idea management. When no one trusts you and no one wants to wants to bring the things forward and no one uh, shares your vision or your strategy, then no one will give you give you ideas. So this is the, one of the next step we will we will uh, yeah improve. And with this empowerment we are doing at the moment. We also empower people and, and, and identify future talents. I think this is, a, is one of the one, one really important point because you get in contact more and more with the people also in a private manner, but also in the, in the workshops at the, um, the shop floor and you, you, you recognize the future talent, uh, talents a, a lot better than in the normal work environment where you go around the factory, say hello and go back to your office or something like that. Isn't this the real mindset shift which we have to do on the factory level that we see the people there not as resources to produce something, but as real people and human beings that have their ideas, they want to be developed, they want to develop their ideas. Isn't that the real thing? I think so. That, that, that's a good conclusion for that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Philip, thanks a lot for being on the show. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Benjamin. What a pleasure also for me.